Broadcast permission for the following program is made possible by the Columbia Broadcasting System. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Till death do us part is perhaps the best-known phrase of the marriage service. Today's brides and grooms say them and all the time believe them, despite so many marriages ending in the divorce courts. There are, however, many marriages that are indeed lasting unions, and some very few that should have the words, till death do us part, changed to a promise to love to the grave and beyond, to the end of time. Emily, why can't I see you? Joss, darling, I am dead, and you live. You've crossed a deep and dark boundary to be here to talk to me, and it is best for you to go back now and forget me. Forget you, Emily? You know I can never do that. Forget that you ever talked to me, Joss. Please, for your sake, if not for mine, Learn to leave the dead alone. Our mystery drama, Home is Where the Ghost Is, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Gordon Gould. I'll be back shortly with Act One. of us has a very special place, a favorite retreat. It may be a particular restaurant or a very special vacation spot or, in our younger days, perhaps a cave or a treehouse. Ghosts are no exceptions to this rule, and for centuries they have favored castles, old creaky houses, and desolate wind-swept moors. For the most part, the spirit world has avoided college towns, perhaps because they were wary of the boisterous spirits displayed by the student bodies. So it came as a shocking surprise when Neil Fox, the proctor of Calhoun University, was called upon to deal with a ghost. I don't believe in ghosts. What happened at Calhoun during the International Conference of Scientific Observers happened. I admit that, but I wasn't dealing with ghosts. I was dealing with Professor Ramsey Jocelyn, a man whose scientific credentials were, and are, impeccable. And I will leave it to you to decide about the ghosts. It started when an excited and distraught Ramsey phoned me late one afternoon. He sounded so upset that I dropped everything to get over to his house. Oh. Neil, thanks for rushing over. Okay. I hope I didn't inconvenience you too much. No, no, not at all. I just left two FBI men and another agent from some super secret arm of the government sitting in my office, but I'd leave a lot more people than that when I heard the note of panic in your voice. Neil, I had an experience. What? Well, before I tell you about it, I want your word that what I have to say goes no farther than between us. You have my word. All right. First... I want you to open the back door to this house and tell me what you see. Okay. Uh, you coming with me? No, I'll stay here. Well, what am I supposed to see? Just open the door. Well? Well, just what I expected. Your backyard, your garden, and off in the distance, the, uh, Howroyd's house. That's it? Nothing else at all? Yeah, that's it. What did you expect? I don't know. I'm not sure. All I know is that when I opened that same door some time ago, I didn't see the backyard or the garden or the Holroyd's house. I saw Emily. Oh. Well, I suppose that's only natural. Only natural. Don't humor me, Neil. 
You know Emily's been dead three weeks. And I saw her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you think you saw her? And talked to her. Well, we better go into the den, have a drink, and just uh, talk this thing out, okay? Okay, fair enough. Now, please listen to me and don't interrupt. Try to put yourself in my place. I walked to the door and opened it. And I saw no backyard, but tree-shaded walks. And I heard music, strange, unearthly music. Go home, Joss. Go home. Emily? Emily? Is that you? You shouldn't be here, my love. You mustn't be here in this place. Where am I, Em? What is this place? No place for the living. Return to life. Why can't I see you? Joss, you must stop thinking about me. You must. <laughs> Why don't you ask me to stop breathing? Oh, my love, I'm not asking you to forget me. I wouldn't ever want you to do that. But you must stop thinking of me as if I were alive. But you are alive to me, Em. You always will be. I can't be, Joss. Please, you must go. For your own sake. Goodbye, Joss. I love you, darling. Goodbye. And that was it, Neil. That was the end. You mean, uh, you came back into the house? No. Before I came back, the place where I'd seen and talked to Emily vanished. And I was in my own backyard, so to speak. Then I came in and phoned you. And now I'm not at all sure I did the right thing. Oh? Huh? Why the second thoughts about calling me? Uh, because you're a realist. A hard-headed ex-police officer who knows there are not such things as ghosts. And who's probably thinking right now, poor old Joss. He's on his way to the funny farm, beginning to see things. Even though you won't come right out and say it. Oh, Ramsey, you're so wrong. Would you be surprised if I told you that I've been expecting something like this? Expecting me to see and talk with Emily? No, no, I won't be that specific. But I know how close you and Emily were, and I know how badly her death hit you. But you haven't shown it. You've been holding your grief in too tightly, Joss. Hugging it to yourself. And it was inevitable that there'd be some reaction. And this... Well, I think this is all it was. You make everything sound plausible. So how would you describe my experience? A temporary hallucination caused by dwelling too long and too closely upon Emily's loss. I couldn't overcome a deep feeling of anxiety about my old friend and the role he was slated to play in the upcoming International Conference of Scientific Observers. I was also concerned about my own course... How was I going to reconcile telling the truth to my house guest, Nick James, and at the same time keep my vow of secrecy to Jocelyn? <sighs> I still didn't have the answer by the time I reached home and found Nick waiting for me. As usual, he wasted no time. Okay, what's the scoop with Jocelyn? Well, look, now, it's not what you were worried about. He's upset about his wife. His wife's dead, Fox. What's bothering him? Just that. He wishes she were alive. Well, how badly does he wish it? It's hard to say. Well, we'd better be able to say. The whole Alexei Vergota operation hangs on Jocelyn. If he's not stable, Vergota isn't going to think of defecting. So far, your outfit is the only one who's even heard about Vergota's desire to defect. Our information is correct. Look, Vergota and Joss have been corresponding for years. Why wouldn't Vergota have dropped him a hint? <laughs> You're being naive. With a man as important as Alexei Vergoda, the slightest trace of anything that whispered of disaffection, and he wouldn't have been allowed to come to this conference. Yeah, but he must have told someone he was fed up because you people heard about it. Vergoda wants out, and we want to help him. We believe that Vergoda will use Ramsey Jocelyn as a contact when he gets here. And as of this minute, I'm worried about Ramsey Jocelyn flipping his lid. Oh, come on, Nick. I, I think you're overreacting. Oh, you'll see some real overreaction if this operation gets fouled up. With all the men you've got out here, I don't understand why you say the whole operation hangs on Jocelyn. Well, our information says Vergoda is going to contact Jocelyn because he trusts him. 
Now, will you guarantee me that he's going to stay normal until this conference is over? Guarantee? No one can guarantee that anyone will even be alive tomorrow. But what I will do is go back and check this whole thing out with Joss. On the way to see Ramsey Jocelyn for the second time that day, I felt vastly better. Because now I could level with Joss. I shake him out of this preoccupation with the loss of Emily by presenting him with his important role in the proposed defection of Alexei Vargoda. I didn't find out until Joss told me later that at the very time I was on my way to see him, Joss was having another experience. Emily? Emily? I came back. You shouldn't have, Joss. You shouldn't have. Why not? What's the harm in my talking with you? I miss you so. I know how difficult it is for you, Joss. And it saddens me. But, Joss, as long as you're here... Yes? Do you remember Alexei? Of course. He's coming here to Calhoun, along with a number of other scientific types. And we're going to have a big powwow. I know. You know? M. tell me, what's it like where you are? I'd like to answer all of your questions. But there are rules, and it's not allowed. Why are we talking about Alexei? Because he will be important to you. Alexei? Yes. You never really knew Alexei, you know. Well, I met Alexei when you did. We both saw him frequently. We've been friends for years. We still correspond. I know, Joss. Then what are you trying to tell me? Dear Joss, do you remember after our second date? Do you remember what I told you? <laughs> of course. You told me that it was part of my charm that I always believed everything anyone told me. And you also said it wasn't very bright of me. That's right, Joss. And you haven't changed. Think about it. This has something to do with Alexei, right? I'd rather say... It has something to do with you. Am I really talking to you, Em? Or is this just a trick of my imagination? Is it my longing for you that makes me believe we're having a conversation? Or am I really honestly talking to you? Oh, you're worrying about the wrong things, Joss. I told you to worry about Alexei. But you haven't told me why. You must stop asking questions because answers are forbidden. By whom? Go back to your house, to your world, and take care when you meet Alexei. I think I've made a discovery. If it only depends on my will to have these talks with you, then I intend to have them. No. No, you mustn't. I've told you, you mustn't. Trust me, Joss. And forget me. Then you must give me a reason. Very few mortals can come as far as you have. And having reached this point, you should be able to understand when I tell you that you are permitted only a certain number of visits. Once you pass that number, you can never return to your world. How many visits am I permitted? Emily? Emily... Did you hear me? How many? Oh, it's unfair. Don't you see that now I'm worse off than before? Emily? Emily, come back! For centuries, gamblers have known that the ultimate gamble was life or death. Now, if Ramsey Joslin believes that he has really been in touch with the spirit of his dead wife, Emily, then he must, if he wishes to talk with her again, take that ultimate gamble. On the other hand, there are those who will say that he dreamed the whole thing. Take your choice, and I will return shortly with Act. Civilization has been of two minds about people who hear voices. In some ancient cultures, they were enshrined as saints or honored as soothsayers, while in more modern times, some 
like Joan of Arc, had been burned at the stake, and others sent to institutions. But the problem becomes complicated when a man who believes he heard the voice of his recently dead wife is not only a scientist and college professor, but also the key figure in the hoped-for defection of a top scientist. Ha, ha, ha. Ramsey, old friend, my game has improved much since we recently opened a bowling alley in my country. <laughs> I can see that. And the wonderful thing about bowling alleys is that the most sophisticated of listening devices are useless here. I take it, then, you have something to tell me that you don't want overheard. Huh? Have you not been informed? If you're talking about the possibility of your staying in this country after the conference is over... I have heard about it. Ah, uh, what did you hear? And from whom? From the proctor, Neil Fox, a friend of mine. He indicated that there were government agents here on the campus waiting to help you, if you want. Ramsey, I not only want, I need. You scientists will wear me out with the hours you keep. Uh, uh, uh. Alexei, are you aware that you have a 9.30 meeting tomorrow? Very well aware of it, Colonel. We were just discussing our varying points of view. I, of course, know you are Ramsey Jocelyn, a distinguished scientist and a friend of my colleague Alexei. Oh, forgive me, Joss. This is Colonel Kirill Polovich, our guide and interpreter on this visit. Interpreter? I always thought you spoke such good English. Uh, Alexei is not the only scientist at this conference, Mr. Jocelyn. I apologize for my rudeness, Colonel. Apology accepted. And I will leave you two old friends to your game. Alex, I really don't know what came over me. Oh, not to worry. What you did will work out very well. Now, before we do anything else, may I offer my condolences? Of course. I should have said something, but I was so shocked. How did it happen? Suddenly. Heart? Cerebral hemorrhage. I didn't... I am sorry. I am sorry, Ramsey. It must be painful for you. Not at all. I have to learn to be able to talk about it. Maybe if I do, it will act as an anesthetic. Dull the pain. Ah, yeah, yeah. And now I come with my small problem. Perhaps you it must would be... let me help. It will give me something to think about. And also, I want to help. If you made this decision, something spectacular must have occurred to make you change your mind. I remember how fiercely we used to argue about the course of history. Oh, yes, yes. There will be time to explain all that. But now, Ramsey, you must help me. I was told to wait for your approach. And we'll meet here two nights from now. And I will have a definite schedule for you to follow to safety. Well, we seem to be off to a fairly good start. Yeah, let's hope we're just as happy at the finish. Why? What do you think might derail us? Well, Nick, I don't know that I'd go as far as saying we're going to be derailed, but there are certain problems. And I don't think I can tell you specifically what they are without betraying a confidence. If you know of something that could interfere with us helping Alexei to defect, you owe it to your country to let me know about it. Okay, Nick, no lectures, please. I was the one who clued you in. I didn't have to. It's just that Ramsey is convinced he's been having conversations with Emily. Mm, so he's finally flipped. No, wait a minute. I don't think he's flipped. Well, then what do you think? You really believe he's talking to a woman who's been dead for a couple of months? Of course not. Nick, haven't you ever had dreams? Are you trying to tell me that Jocelyn dreams he's been talking to his wife? Everybody dreams. No. How about daydreams? What kind of daydreams? Well, let's say that you open the back door of your house. Suddenly you're not in your own backyard, but in uh, all sort of an Elysian field. And you can hear and talk with your wife. I guess we'll have to get cracking and pray that we can get Alexei Bergoda out before Jocelyn really cracks up. How sure are you that he's cracking up? Nick, have you ever thought that he might just be telling the truth? I have good news for you. I've spoken to my people, and everything's been arranged. You will never know how grateful I am to you. I promise you, Ramsey, that someday I will repay. Oh, forget it, Alexei. You know I'm happy to do it. 
Then, where and how? It will be at the Roundabout Inn luncheon when we make our visit to Eden Farm. Aha! That is the day after tomorrow, is it not? It is. And how? I, I hope one thing, that it is not complicated. No, it's the soul of simplicity. No one knows the exact minute that we'll be sitting down to lunch, because the tour at the farm will take some time. Uh, what is this farm? Oh, Eden Farms produces only natural products grown organically. It's really a fascinating and instructive project. Uh, I see, but you will forgive me if I am more interested in the, uh, the, uh, arrangements. Of course. As I said, it doesn't matter what time we sit down to lunch. Uh -huh. You will excuse yourself after the first course has been served and ask for the men's room. You are allowed to go there, unaccompanied, I hope. Hey, well, uh, usually, but there should be a contingency plan, you know. There is. I'll explain in a minute. Because I've been to the farm so many times, I shan't be along on the trip. But I will go to the inn early. The inn's facilities are somewhat rustic. I shall be in the men's room, waiting for you. You will enter and escape through the window. It is large enough for a man to go through easily. Ah, and once I am out... The gravel driveway runs right under the window. There'll be a car, and you'll be safe. And free, provided that you have a contingency in case I am accompanied when I leave the table. If that happens, whoever it is will be stopped momentarily by the Mater D, who will have some inconsequential question to ask. Ah. <sighs> Well, it would seem that everything has been well planned. You don't sound very happy about it. Oh, I am, I am. But uh, you, of all people, just should understand that to me, I am giving up a country, a way of life, and perhaps more importantly, a philosophy by which I have lived ever since I can remember. If you're having second thoughts... The people who have been briefing me will be very upset. No, no. No second thoughts. But I am sure you will understand that it's only natural for me to be apprehensive. Ramsey, I face an unknown future. And at this time of my life, that is something to think about. <laughs> Josh, you're, you're quiet today. I'm not used to this cloak and dagger stuff. Uh, neither am I. But at this point, there's nothing for you to worry about. You know what you have to do. Are you sure everything's been arranged? Positive. Carl will be waiting. Your absence from the tour at Eden Farm has been accounted for. And all that remains is for you to wait for Alexei. But, uh, by the way, how did he take the plan? Oh, I hate all this. I'm a scientist, not an expert in the ins and outs of defectors. Hey, okay, okay, Joss, calm down. There's nothing to your part in this now. All you have to do is wait until Vergoda shows, and then after he's through the window, just uh, walk out. Well, then why not let somebody else do it? Now, you know that's a silly question. Can you imagine Vergoda's reaction if he walked into that room and didn't see you? Mm, you have a point. But then he wouldn't go through with it. And maybe he'd be happier. Oh. Is that the feeling you got when you explained the plan to him? The feeling that he wasn't 100% sold on the idea? I can't say that exactly, but... Well, I imagined he'd be more enthusiastic than he was. But what do I know? Well, you're perceptive. Your feelings are important. How about Emily's feelings? Emily? Well, what's she got to do with this? She's warned me against Alexei. Oh. You've, uh... Seen her again? No, I've never seen her. I told you, we talk. Out in your backyard? Yes. It happened again, after I spoke with you. Ah. Uh, Joss, when she warned you, was she specific? Did she know that Alexei was thinking of defecting? From the questions you're asking, it appears that you're beginning to believe in Emily yourself. No, not a bit. But I believe in you. What does that mean? Joss, I know you. I believe that your subconscious has picked up some signals from Alexei. You're not sure about them or yourself, so you've transferred those doubts to have them voiced by Emily or, or your idea of Emily. In other words, you think I'm talking to myself. Don't you think your foot's a little heavy on the gas? Talking to ourselves is one thing. And what I'm experiencing with Emily, quite another. And you damn well know it. Now, Josh, you're under a strain, and you're definitely driving too fast. I just wish I could take you with me when I open that back door into the garden. 
Then maybe you'd believe me. Okay, okay. We'll try it sometime. Now, Josh, slow down. I'll drive as fast as I want. Come on, now. You're being childish. Because you're treating me like a child, humoring me, and really not believing for a moment, or even opening your mind to what... Josh, Josh, watch it. The the truck at the crossroads. Hang on. I'm going to try to beat him to the truck. No, Josh. Yes, hello. Neil, I called your house first, but they told me you were still in the hospital. I thought you were supposed to get out today. Oh, I was, and I am. Just waiting for one last x-ray. What time do you think you'll be out? Sometime this afternoon. Anything up? Have you uh, heard from our friend? Only the usual courtesy call, hoping I wasn't seriously hurt in the crash. He wasn't alone when he called. Mm, That was to be expected. I was hoping you were out, because I wanted to remind you about our promise. What promise? The last thing we were talking about before the accident. Remember? I asked you to accompany me when I walked in my garden. Oh, yes, yes. Have you walked since the accident? No, but I'm most anxious for us both to go. Okay, Ramsey, right. I'll come directly to your house from here, even before I go home. You're not scared, are you? No, of course not, but uh, maybe there has to be some kind of preparation. Like what? Well, like me thinking about Emily, concentrating on her and you doing the same. I don't see why. I never thought about her before. I mean, made an effort. I just opened the door and there she was. All right. Go ahead. Open it. I just thought of something. What? Suppose... Just suppose that when I open this door, you see the backyard as it was, always, and I see what I've seen before. Then we at least will have some kind of an answer, won't we? I suppose so. Well, here goes. Well? Nothing. It's just my backyard. That's right, Charles. That's all it is. Why don't we take a walk? Okay. I've got time for just about a five-minute stroll, Joss, and then I think it'll be back to the drawing board because we still have a commitment to Vergota. We walked for the full five minutes through the entire garden, but nothing changed, and Jocelyn never claimed that he had heard Emily's voice. Joss and I went back into the house, and I returned home after telling Joss that Nick James was going to come up with another plan for Vergota's defection. I didn't know till Joss told me the next day that he'd gone back to the garden alone. Emily? Emily? Maybe I made a mistake bringing Neil. Maybe it isn't allowed or something. But I didn't do it for any other reason except to prove to Neil that I'm not out of my mind. Uh, Emily, where are you? Are you going to talk to me? I'm not going back until I've spoken with you. My dear love, I don't believe you. Someone I've met here on this side said you were an impossible man. You didn't let them get away with that, did you, Em? No, of course not. I said you weren't impossible merely improbable. But that isn't what you wanted to hear, is it? You know it isn't. I knew about the accident. And you tried to warn me when you told me to look out for Alexei. Not exactly. But you did warn me about Alexei, didn't you? Yes. And you must have known what was going to happen. Oh, you must stop this, Joss. You must. It's terribly dangerous for you. More dangerous than... Alexei? Oh, yes. Much, much more. I must go. I swear by your love for me and mine for you, if you visit me once more, you can never go back. The question remaining to be answered is, 
Will a man as strong-minded as Ramsey Joslin heed the warning? I'll be back with that answer in Act Three in just a few moments. Iron Curtain countries have long been interested in esoteric sciences. ESP and telekinesis have led in experimentation that has been well publicized. But one may well wonder whether they haven't also looked into the occult. If this were true, as well it might be, then a dissenting scientist who wished to defect wouldn't be too upset to find his contact in the United States engaged in conversation with his dead wife. This opinion, however, isn't shared by the American government agent masterminding the arrangements for the defector. Foul-ups. That's what you can expect every time you deal with amateurs. Oh, look, Nick, I don't see how you can blame an automobile accident on the fact that Ramsey Jocelyn is an amateur in espionage. He was driving, wasn't he, Fox? And according to you, he was upset about his wife, and he wasn't paying attention to what he should have been thinking about. One thing only. To get to the inn and get Bergota out of there. Look, the conference ends Friday at 3 p.m. All of the scientists and visitors will be off the campus. We just have to come up with something that's workable between now and 3 p.m. Friday. Well, that gives us just two days. Two days to get a plan. Give it to Jocelyn. Have him contact Bergota and then carry it off. All right, excuse me for asking what's undoubtedly a stupid question, but... What would be wrong with having Vergoda simply walk up to your office and ask to be taken to a U.S. consul for asylum? Nothing. All you have to do is tell me how he can get up here unescorted. And what reason could Vergoda give to come to your office? He'd have to invent something that his people would buy. Okay. All right, what does that leave us with? What we had from the beginning. His friendship with Ramsey Jocelyn. At the same time that Nick James was outlining the new plan to me, a meeting was taking place at the dormitory that had been assigned to the visitors. I didn't know it at the time, but it was all too clear before the end of this affair. As you well know, Comrade Dagoda, our superiors don't believe in acts of God. Nor automobile accidents either, eh, Colonel? By whatever names we call it, it is failure... And we both know how they regard failure. There need be no failure here with Jocelyn. We are desperately short of time. Who says that Jocelyn is so important that we must have him? What? Didn't the original suggestion for the kidnapping of Jocelyn come from you? Whether or not Jocelyn is important to us has no bearing on their attitude about me. You agree that I am still a number one priority on their books? Yes, I agree. So, they must renew their efforts to set up another rendezvous. And time also pressures them. I am going to explain to my old friend Jocelyn that I have decided it isn't in the cards for me to be able to defect successfully. Hmm, very clever. Then you expect him to argue with you and try to change your mind? Ah, most certainly. And during that urgent arguing, we will again become very close. And we will talk much more openly about everything, including his experiments. I uh, cannot see any major objections to this proposal. Uh, what is our agenda for today? Well, let me see. Uh, two meetings. The afternoon conference on weather control data is at Goodwin Hall. As I remember, there is a cafeteria at Goodwin. Why don't we lunch there and allow ourselves to be, uh, shall we say, discovered? I think you should know, Alexei, that you never fooled me for a moment. What? Who is that? Emily, the girl you hoped to marry. <gasps> you always had an underlying streak of treachery, Alexei, and it made you completely unattractive. Is this some trick? Something... No trick, Alexei. But please, remember, you may fool Joss, but you will never fool me. 
Hey, this, this, oh, this is ridiculous. Gentlemen, may I join you? Of course, Joss, of course. I am delighted to see you so rapidly recovered from your accident. Thank you, Alexei. I, too, had my pleasure at your recovery. Thank you also, Colonel. You're attending this afternoon's conference, then, Alexei. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Well, there you are, Colonel Polovich. I'm very glad I found you. Yes, Mr. Fox? My office received a threat just about an hour ago. Ordinarily, I would have had the campus police handle it, but this one was partially written in Russian, and so of I... Of course, thought, uh, you were right. I would like to see it. Uh, it will keep till after you finish your lunch, Colonel. No, 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 no. I want to look at this immediately. Comrade Vergoda, we will meet later at the conference in the usual seat. Of course. There aren't any words to apologize for what I did to you, Alexei. So I won't say any more. Ah, uh, Josh, you mustn't feel that way. An accident. It was not your fault. It could have happened to anyone. But it didn't. Do you think I could live with the thought that except for me, you would have been free? Well, uh, it may not have worked. A new plan has been formulated. Ah, well, that is very kind of you, but I do not think that there is enough time. Well, there's to plenty of time. This may be even a better plan than the first. I'm giving you a farewell dinner tomorrow night at my house. Of course, I know that I also have to invite Colonel Polovich. But that is all. Also present will be Neil Fox, the proctor, and a few others, all agents. After dinner is over, you will announce that you are staying. What can the colonel do? Well, I, uh, I do not know. Oh, come on, Alexei. You know as well as I, there's nothing he can do. You are tempting me. But if your house is watched too closely, Ramsey, it will only serve to alert Polovich. Not with the threat that he's going to read in Neil's office. That will be the ostensible reason for having agents around the house. Uh, perhaps I was remiss in not notifying you that I had had a change of mind, but I had no way of knowing that you would be preparing another plan. Look, Alexei... You have every reason to believe that somehow I may foul this up again and you would be the one to suffer. But I ask only one thing of you. Be prepared to make a decision when you come to my house for that farewell dinner. So now, Colonel, we go back to the original design. We take Ramsey Jocelyn back with us. But now we have to take him from under the noses of the men who think you are going to defect to them. Ah, they have made a large mistake. Because of the false threat they showed you earlier, you have every right to ask to participate in the security arrangements for the dinner. Hmm. It should be a relatively simple matter to replace their men with ours. Perhaps. But still, I will have to be at the dinner and will have to use... Uh, in some uh, force to get Jocelyn away. Ah, yes. A dart gun to incapacitate the agent Nick James. I do not think that the proctor will give us any trouble. And uh, Jocelyn? Well, if necessary, we can drug him as previously planned. Ah, we will go to the dinner and adopt your plan. <laughs> An excellent deal, Mr. Jocelyn, excellent. I'm happy to hear you say that, Colonel. You see, Alexei, everything went off as planned at your farewell dinner. Not quite, old friend. Not quite. What? No one will move, please. Uh, now, wait a minute, Colonel. Before you do anything foolish, you should know that this house is surrounded... Surrounded and under surveillance by loyal members of my country and that your friend there, Nick James is a government agent whom I deal with so. Oh, no need what? for alarm, please. Mr. James is not dead, merely tranquilized. Oh. The same will happen to anyone else who tries to interfere. I swear to you, Alexei, I don't know... I... Oh. Ramsey, it was all my doing. Oh, I don't understand. I never intended to defect. I've always been happy with my life. But, old friend, I do believe that you have stumbled across a discovery that we can put to good use. 
in my country. If you're talking about the Les Nyan, you can forget it, Alexei. I wouldn't think of... Either you come with the colonel and me, willingly, or we will tranquilize you. Emily, she warned me against you. This is what she meant. Come, Alexei. We waste time, and we do not have enough to waste. Emily, she warned you against me? Impossible. You lie. She was not sure which of us to choose until the very last moment. Oh, I don't mean years ago. I mean now. Just before your visit. What? But she couldn't have. She is dead. Nevertheless, she did. And I can prove it. Do you dare to have it proved to you? Enough! You will come to this side of the table. Ramsey, how can you prove it? Easily. Just step out into the garden with me, and Emily will prove it. The garden? By that we will... No, one moment, Colonel. The garden. One minute in the garden. And you'll have your proof. All right. Move quickly. We will be back directly, Colonel. There is nothing to lose since we have the house safely surrounded. I give you one minute, Alexei. No more. The door closed behind them. We waited. One minute passed, then two. And then the colonel ordered us all into the garden. But they had disappeared. Both Ramsey Jocelyn and Alexei Vagoda. Neither was ever seen again. The story you've just heard cannot, of course, be verified. Although we do know there was such a conference. And we also know that one member attending the conference was taken ill and never returned to his homeland. As for Professor Ramsey Joslin, the papers say he died in an automobile accident. All we know is that he is dead. I'll be back shortly. Much has been written about the last frontier, space. And now it seems that we have conquered that. Writers and social planners bemoan the fact that there are no more frontiers for man to cross. But is that really true? The final mystery, death, and life after death, still remains as tantalizing, as frightening, and as full of hope as ever. I, for one, will be exploring it right here with you seven times a week. Our cast included Gordon Gould, Patricia Elliott, William Redfield, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The idea is, Ashworth, it mustn't go to the jury. How do you stop it from going to the jury? After Anderson presents his evidence, he's going to ask the judge for a dismissal of the charge. And what makes you think the judge will dismiss... So we get the dismissal or a directed verdict of not guilty. Oh. Well, how can you be sure the judge will play along? I mean... You can't make sure a judge is in this town. Well, of course, but up to a point, this is a drug rap. It's enough to make any jurist run scared. That's why we need a safe judge, an absolutely safe judge. Joseph, you know as well as I do, given this kind of case, where can we find one? That's your problem, Ashworth. Your problem. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
The preceding program was broadcast with the permission of the Columbia Broadcasting System.